So team, welcome to uh, Selenium 3.0 live training. We are in day two. So previously, we have done an orientation session followed by day one. Uh, typically, the orientation session was to give you a complete picture of what you're going to learn in the, uh, the overall Selenium course that we're trying to do it as live training. It's, it's as I reiterated multiple times, it's not just about Selenium. Selenium uh, with the Java, core Java language that is required. Of course, Selenium can work on various other languages also. So we'll get to introduce to these Python, Ruby, etc. But primarily all our development uh, examples and everything will be on the core Java side. And it's not just about Selenium. We have various tools that can be integrated with Selenium and do it. For example, JUnit is one of them for unit testing. TestNG is another framework that we're going to integrate with Selenium. Uh, as and then we will also going to talk about selenium grid we're going to develop the page object model framework we're going to develop data driven framework we're going to develop keyword driven framework once we understand how to read the data from excel using apache poa etc we are and as some of you are typing there we are going to develop um, continuous integration continuous deployment model but for that we need to understand the how do we take care of the build management, jar dependency management, etc., with Apache Maven? And then we have to talk about Jenkins and how do we integrate our script with Jenkins. Uh, we um, Yes, we have sessions on Cucumber. If somebody is in Arjuns, you can even start watching it. I have recently done it. Uh, we can share those videos. So this is exactly Syed. What, what I covered uh, in the last few minutes or five minutes is, is the major quick a snapshot of the orientation session all all i did in the orientation was listed out every single topic uh, in in the word document google word document i'll be sharing that with you post this session or you should definitely just go watch the orientation and the day one videos right so and i clearly told you don't need to know anything about it previously you don't need to know java you don't need to know how to work with it that's all will be taken care all you need to do is a bit of practice okay so let's let's uh, start with a little bit of an introduction into the selenium today uh, we need to move a little bit and then i'll take some of the questions as they come relevant no so uh, puja has one question can we do cucumber videos without jenkins maven etc yes cucumber is majorly for a behavior driven development uh, that's slightly but only thing is yeah so you're right and probably in one or two examples i have used maven so it would be better if you uh, watch maven jenkins and then cucumber since anyway you're going to be part of this course just write an email hey i'm so and so part of this uh, program can you just share those videos you will be given an access all right let's uh, let's move on and then i'll take up the questions so it's majorly uh, it can even work with c sharp it all depends on uh, like I, I covered this question in the last video also it all depends on which project that you're working which application that you're working on for example uh, if the application is developed in java the team uh, the qa management team can decide let's go selenium with java because we have already an in-house knowledge of java uh, we have developers working with java and a lot of other programs working in java so if you get struck with any of these you have a help but let's say the whole program and the projects are working with the microsoft technologies let's say they're using visual studio or wpf etc then they may decided to go selenium with c sharp because uh, uh, we have the in-house knowledge of uh, c sharp and the application but but as i again pull to this point it does not really matter whether your application is in java or uh, microsoft technology you can use both you can either use java comfortably or you can use c sharp so please don't assume that if my application is in Microsoft technology, I have to go with C sharp only. No, there's nothing like that. Or if my application is in Microsoft technology, I have to go with C sharp. No, you can use Java. Or if my application is in Java, do I need to compulsorily go with Java? No, you can use C sharp also. All the daily trainings will be available as uh, videos. 
okay uh pooja just i'm not really uh have any any experience on mainframe but all i can tell you is that's what we're going to look into the introduction i think i should just switch here then everything will be clear okay so for the first few minutes let's try to understand a bit on the uh, hope you all can see the word document right can you all see this word document yeah so selenium is like a free source or open source automated functional testing suite it's primarily for web applications so if your application is be it a mainframe whatever the technology underlying it's not really a problem as long as it is a web it's fine so any web application you can uh, automate it with selenium and the biggest advantage this is works for different browsers so uh, probably certain tools would have limited to only ie or only firefox etc for example uh, uh, selenium id was one of the tool right now it's it's in a breakable state it's not working so but uh, it was it was just a firefox add in so you it was working with only firefox right similarly we had an hp uft tool which initially they developed it was only working for uh, internet explorer later on of course with certain plugins and everything you have to you can convert your script into chrome firefox and run it but selenium is not like that it works for different browsers you can write your code for internet today itself we are going to look at for uh, chrome and then uh, sorry first to start with firefox and then we can even try for internet explorer and other browsers another important thing is different operating systems again uh if you look at the limitation with other tools like again hp uft it's majorly <coughs> works only on the windows operating systems but whereas this you can work on windows operating system you can work on linux you can work on macintosh on different operating systems you can work on right uh sorry i missed your question prita like i just got only for selenium live training i don't know the previous part i missed so it's quite similar to other commercial tools like we have hp uft in the market we have microsoft visual test uh, test suite in the market so similar to that uh, like you know typically in any automation world you will be working with various different controls on your application if you go open any web page what you will have there will be a browser there will be a page and there will be a text box a combo box a radio button check button a table or a grid so same thing uh, the way we are going to identify those controls and and try to perform the operations on those controls try to read the values if it is a text box so all those things in a pretty much same way we are going to do it in most of the automation tools but of course the syntax and how you do it what commands you are going to do it and how they identify those controls is slightly different in uh, each of the tool but if you know one tool you can definitely get the benefit uh, of that knowledge but if you don't have any prior automation knowledge also totally fine we are going to deal it in a very fundamental way uh, what is the purpose of the tool please all the questions related to to pay and all that uh, take it with the team but i i know um, just today is a free again uh, i think it's it's going to start immediately from tomorrow okay the purpose of the selenium tool is no you can okay pooja has one more question is the uft limited to ie no you can you have a plugins you can get those plugins and convert your scripts into the other uh, browsers as well <clears throat> see but those things and all developed uh, when we have a competitor like selenium came up into the market you don't need to worry uh, seeing other questions so what i will do is uh, radhika i will read out the question and i'll answer it out probably if my answer is not very clear enough i'll read the question from now and then i answer it so what is the purpose of this tool not only a uh, uh, selenium tool in fact any automation tool the main purpose is regression testing again you need to just watch my just the previous video that is day 1 video I was totally focusing on why we need an automation uh, how we actually decide on an automation based on the return on investment that you are going to do and i clearly stated if your product is going to stop after two or three versions 
you should not be really investing in automation it's actually uh, not going to benefit but if you think the product is going to go for a good number of releases maybe for at least one two years and uh, then you should actually think about automation because you're going to do more of a regression testing or retesting without any code change sometimes or maybe on the server side there will be some security patches get supplied and then you have to run some uh, testing again so that kind of a repetition is manually impossible so that's where we actually go with uh, automation testing so in case of a regression testing or retesting or you did an entire testing on internet explorer but you don't have uh, time to repeat that on a chrome or a firefox or any other browser or safari then you can use leverage this automation uh, one browser probably you can do manual and remaining all browsers you can continuously run the test uh, automated way in same case with os i have done my entire testing on windows but this product is going to go on uh, linux as well macintosh as well so but again testing of all 500 test cases on all the three operating systems will take a lot of time so you can leverage the automation so just watch the day one which is a just the previous one will give you a complete picture of why we should go for an automation because i do expect people directly join from manual testing so day one session is kind of required uh, uh, to understand why the automation etc etc now coming to the history of selenium little bit of it selenium first version was released in the way back 2004 okay it was a company thoughtworks was initially developing for themselves uh, to automate uh, 2004 was like uh, uft is like a king in the market it's not even uft it was called qtp at that particular time quick test professional it was totally ruling the market um, anybody thinks of an automation qtp was the number one tool at that particular time but it was all commercial i mean you have to go buy it from uh, a company called mercury interactive you have to buy it from them license for any year um, and then you have to use it so that time only selenium came into picture which is 1.0 but it was not at all popular a very few companies are in fact thoughtworks was the only thing that was that was using it later on it was taken over by google uh, and then lots of contributors came in and provided a lot of enhancements to it and for the last eight years or so or little less than that maybe six years or so it, it's so popular and most of the people migrated from uh, any other commercial tool like uft uh, qtp converted into uft way back in like four or five years back so a lot of people from qtp or uft switch to uh, selenium because there is a it's a free source first point and there's a lot of support available uh, it can support any browsers any operating systems etc so people started switching from all the commercial tools like uft vsts uh, and any other functional testing tool that they were using it who developed it primarily uh, jason huggins is the primary developer of this found uh, is kind of 1.0 later on <clears throat> since 1.0 was not really doing great uh, not doing great in the sense I mean, today also we are still in that only. The architecture is still same, but there is a lot of uh, uh, enhancements that needed to happen, and he alone cannot do it, or even ThoughtWorks can alone cannot spend a lot of time and do it, right? So that's when Google acquired it in 2010. So Google taken over that uh, in 2010, and they have rewritten with a lot of components uh, Selenium 2.0, and this was uh, uh, done by a major engineer called. Simon Stewart is the one who majorly worked on it. Uh, this is little older notes. I will update it back uh, and then I'll send it. Now, and recently, I would say in 2017, definitely, Selenium 3.0 is released. Okay. Selenium 3.0 released. Uh, again, by Google. Of course, it's still with Google and a uh, lot of other supports and other uh, developers this is happened in 2017 so what we're talking about is the the latest version of selenium which is 3.0 how will i know all these things just go to seleniumhq.org that's a primary website 
and within few minutes from now we are going to download as well the required software we'll configure it with one of the integrated development environments so we're going to start with a little bit of practicals from today itself so you can see the selenium uh, <clears throat> the latest version uh, you can see is a three dot so which website you have to go seleniumhq.org and then i went to download section of it later on uh, post the session you can start going through the introduction and other components etc so you can see the latest version is 3.6.0 so that is the latest version so the current version is 3.6.0 and it keeps changing if you come back 10 days later you will see a different version i mean it's not every 10 days but there is a chance uh, uh, of every week and every fortnight or in every month there will be a new release coming up you can see a little bit of notes here but we'll come back to this notes uh, after understanding its 1.0 2.0 architecture a bit because he's talking about selenium server rc and all that this is this is the current version of it okay <clears throat> then what what a selenium suit contains typically uh, selenium is just not a single tool okay so as somebody was asking what is a drawback of selenium compared to uft i would not say really it's a drawback uh, but but i feel sometimes uh, it's a painful in one way if you go and install commercial tools like UFT or a Visual Studio test suit, it just comes everything bundled. It's 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 like a ready-made suit for you. Just you have to go wear it, that's it. So just install the software, everything will be available to you by default, uh, whether the required plugins or the required browsers, plugins that it can support or operating system plugins that it can support, or, uh, or you know, if I have to work with a, a things like different folders and files in my system or if I have to work with uh, Excel files or MS Office files in my system I'm just comparing this with a UFT let's say or if I have to connect to a database uh, or if I have to work with MS Office files just I have repeated so everything is by default available there's nothing extra that you need to do after installing the tool all you have to do is just select what you want but Selenium is not like that it's 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 a suit of various components. It's a collection of different, different things. And based on your need, you have to configure all those things into your project. Like today only we will start with that. When I, when you install uh, with the Selenium you know, Eclipse IDE, all you can do is only just the Java program on that. But if you want a Selenium, then you have to go download your Selenium server and configure it to your IDE, then it will understand Selenium. And if you want to work with a J unit, then you have to download one more jar file, add it to your project, then it will understand J unit. If you want a test ng, then you have to go search over internet, search for the test ng dot jar file, add it to your project, then it will start understanding. And same case with every other thing that you're going to do, be it working with an Excel file, be it working with your databases, be it working with your uh, file system, uh, folder system, or related to any other you know, extra thing that you're going to do apart from what is available in Selenium library, because it's all open source and you have different, different, in the Java, world of Java, um, the executable component will be prepared as a jar file, .jar, okay, Java runtime file. And there are various organizations or various people have developed different jars for a different purpose. All you have to do is download those jars and add it to your project and and then then only you will be actually be able to do the function. So it's not like a ready-made suit available as in like other commercial tools. Um, and a lot of times not just the jar. If I have to work with uh, uh, Cucumber, let's say I have to install another plugin. If I have to work with um, Maven, then I have to install another software. If I have to work with Jenkins, I have to install uh, other required plugins. So there's a lot of times you have to install plugins between your IDE and the uh, corresponding softwares. You have to configure jar files. So it's it's a bit of uh, initially it will be really be kind of uh, painful, but. It's, it's not that pain as well. Again, as you just start doing it, it'll be very easy and you'll feel okay. Uh, 
from where you can download if you know all the jar files will be available in the maven repository uh, world you have to just go there download those files add it to your project and things will be fine other than this i don't really see a major drawback of uh, selenium comparing with any other commercial tool and sometimes one more thing one more thing is that today uh, okay these are the suit of okay first let me talk about this components and then talk about uh, another problem that we have today okay when the selenium 1.2 component got released it came up with something called selenium ide integrated development environment and there was a component called uh, why i'm talking about all these things because when uh, when tomorrow you are searching for something on an internet uh, you might get some helpful file somebody has posted an article or anything and might be referring to any of these components so you should be able to differentiate which component is what and when it got released but we are not going to do anything any practicals on 1.0 not any much of the practicals on 2.0 we're going to directly work with 3.0 but you need to know these components a bit of it okay so there is something called selenium ide which is a integrated development kind of an environment uh, i'll just quickly show but the problem that i'm talking about today is actually it's not working okay it's broken uh, with the latest uh, version of it so if i'm just running this firefox administrator a firefox uh, browser <clears throat> And if you it, it it works only on the Firefox browser first of all, and if you go in the Firefox and type uh, a Selenium IDE and say download, you will get a link basically. It's just an add-on to the Firefox. It's browser add-on. Okay, nothing else. If you go here, uh, you will get an IDE called. Uh, you'll get a component called Selenium IDE, which is developed by Jason Huggins and these are the other folks who contributed to it. And it says it's an integrated development environment for Selenium tests. Uh, it implemented as a Firefox extension, which allows you to record, edit, and debug tests. Okay. Um, and the current version of Firefox that I have, you can just go to this icon, and then you can go to this question mark here to check which version of Firefox you are using. Uh, it's a little bit of, oh, I think it's being upgraded. Okay. So I need to switch off this up, update, otherwise it just go on. Uh, that's a problem, actually. I, the latest version of Firefox is 56. What I had to do yesterday was uh, to even get this option called uh, add Selenium ID to the Firefox. I had to literally go down to the lowest version which is 47 where this firefox was working oh, sorry the id was working but even then i was actually facing a lot of issues there okay so in a in a nutshell this first component that we wanted to discuss is kind of in a very broken environment today and we'll have to wait and uh, wait for a few more days to hear it the fix from the team uh, for the latest version of the 56 I have read through some articles they're working on it to make it best for the latest version of Firefox etc so we'll have to wait for it uh, then we'll be able to see that so somebody asked uh, uh, what is another problem with selenium right it's it's all open source in the open source you cannot really demand much right uh, you cannot really demand much because it's you're getting it for the free and there are a lot of people with a passion they are coming and contributing to it uh, so you need to sometimes you may need to wait for certain fix to come so that your scripts will run actually speaking uh, it is a lot better today and the problem is with only IDE which is not many people will use it for development actually why we use IDEs first anybody to start understanding selenium how it works how how it understands my controls so there is a way to record and playback okay uh, puja i'll answer it just give me a minute i'll answer your question so uh, this is more like a recording and playback kind of uh, environment and that too only firefox browser okay it just works only for the firefox browser so because they started initial selenium 1.0 as like this then they realized this is going to be sufficient. We have to really develop with a lot of other library components so that people can uh, write in a particular program like a Java, 
or a uh, python was not there at that time in 2.0 uh, like a java or a c sharp or uh, maybe in a native html language so what they have done is they came up with another component called uh, selenium rc which is a remote control which is can see clearly which is also deprecated long back but you might when you search in the internet you might still some get notes on it so absolutely don't worry it, it's no way available now it's totally deprecated it was something called remote control so how the programs used to run was like you run from your client and the programs used to connect to a, so you had to install a server you had to install a client develop the programs on the client and they used to run on connecting to the server there's a lot of complex architecture in the remote control and it was again not people were easily accepting that because uh, again commercial tools like uf qtp was king in the market at that time with a simple installation you can do a lot of things so why i should do all these things client server connecting blah 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 so people were not really appreciating so and uh, to run programs parallelly suppose you developed a, a program for your application and you need to run it on internet explorer browser firefox browser mac uh, and, and safari browser or maybe on a different operating system first one is on windows second one is on mac third one is on linux how can i run all these things parallelly so then they they, they came up with a component called selenium grid or a grid one we call it as first version of the grid which is also deprecated now uh, we have the latest version which is grid 2 we are going to discuss in our programs in our live training we're going to talk about grid 2 which is the latest version of it so initially i'm talking about the story long back like as i told you 2004 times to 2007 or 8 times these components were there uh, but since not much popular people were not accepting uh, very very much so they came up with selenium 2 until last year till 2016 everybody who was using selenium was selenium 2.0 okay and uh, tools like robot framework uh, that is there in the market uh, there are a couple of other frameworks was totally dependent on selenium 2.0 library and there's not not major change in 3.0 in 3.0 also what we're going to uh, use is most of the 2.0 functions only available and there are some enhancements related to different browsers etc okay so you can totally forget about 1.0 and if you if you see any of the components like remote control absolutely it's no way available now you can totally forget it uh, grid one you can totally forget about it okay and now ide only for just to record and see how the script will be generated okay and uh, okay probably let me just uh, show the tool if it works so what you have to do is you have to go to the firefox first thing there was a question on how uh, i know it's not working but just like you know you can give it a try if you want this nothing is going to uh, uh, hamper anything for our further development the very first thing that you have to do is go to selenium sorry go to you need to have firefox browser on your machine that is the very first thing i'm not sure whether everybody has a firefox browser you should have a firefox browser and that to prefer something like a version of 45 or less than that okay go with something like 45 or less then the first thing that you have to do is uh, switch off that upgrade things okay there is there should be an option to switch off checking for updates otherwise you know this is more like customizing it okay Uh, there will be an option to switch off the update. So if there is a future update available, it's not going to do by default. Okay. That's the another thing that you can do. Everybody will have. So what happens Firefox is it will automatically update the latest version that's there on the availability. <clears throat> So once you have, uh, but you can always uninstall and go back to the previous version of it. And once you have that, just go to uh, Google and type here. 
we're going to depend on most of the time on Google for searching the required components. So you can say Selenium IDE download. Okay. Just type this. This one where you can say Selenium IDE add on for Firefox. If you have the latest version of Firefox, you won't even have this option coming up. Or even if you will be able to add, it will not show and it will not work for you. Okay. So just go back to the uh, previous version of it, like 45 or lesser than that. And all you have to do is just click on Add to Firefox. Then it says this site would like to install this add on Firefox to your Firefox browser. Say Add. And after that, you will get this option. Uh, you need to install. So it says uh, Selenium ID will be installed after you restart the Firefox. So just click on the restart now. And then what happens is that uh, if you go to open menu, there's an option called developer. If you go here, you will see an icon called Selenium ID. This is a kind of thing. And if you open this and good thing is we have uh, the previous version of videos, which was in a working state. You can definitely uh, go back to 45 or less and see if it works for you. And you can start watching the videos, but I really like I can show you right now. It's, it's not in a working stage. So by default, it comes in the recording mode. And previously, all we used to do is just go on record your actions here. Uh, if you just say, let's say, www.qaonair.com. This is the application we're going to use predominantly. qaonair.com, which is uh, an in-house project for Workasa INC, which is an associated company for an IT learn, where people can, uh, it's, it's basically a, a bridge between the people who are looking for the jobs and the people who are looking for the freelance developers or testers, etc. So ideally, if everything was working, it should have started recording that thing here, but uh, it's not working actually. So when I click on it or when I say new test case or when I say insert a new command, I keep getting these errors. There is an unexpected error, etc. So the, the problem is uh, uh, the purpose of this tool is you can create a simple recording script and the script will be coming up here and we had a very good options to export these into whatever the format we want whether we want it in a C sharp format or we wanted it in a Java format or we wanted in a Ruby format or uh, Java with test ng so you can you could easily it by default comes uh, it would have come in the HTML format and you can simply export it and it would have been exported into whatever the format that you want. That was a major advantage of it. Another advantage is like, you know, just to, uh, it's more like a warm up. It's a prep for getting into the Selenium. Okay, how to, un uh, to understand how Selenium identifies these controls. Uh, more than that, I, in fact, for me, other than this option, I don't really feel much value of working with uh, IDE. All we could do in IDE, we can do much better directly in the web driver. And these are the different uh, sub, uh, you know, formats it will support C sharp, Python, Ruby, Java, etc. And uh, there were some in the beginning, there were some people who were using only IDE and uh, you can even schedule the tests to run it periodically. Like again, it's it's crashing. You can do like, you know, uh, to run this program on every Monday to Friday. Uh, at so and so hour, so and so minute. So automatically, this program, whatever you develop, used to uh, regularly run on that particular interval that you have scheduled. So that is one aspect of it. And other than that, I don't see much uh, thing. And whatever I could do it here, I'll do it in much much better way. We'll discuss much much detailed way in the web driver directly. And once probably when the tool comes back, when when they provide the fix. I can I, I'm, I'm happy to spend two to three sessions on this and then we can even talk about uh, the ID as well. But it's basically like a startup uh, to start with the Selenium. 
just to understand because most of other tools will have recording and playback like uft visual studio etc and the moment we go to web driver directly there won't be any recording it's all you have to type the program so we are going to type the program and start working on it but if you want to just get comfortable first uh, i don't know anything about selenium so how can i how can i know what is the syntax how it works etc etc then people would go to ide and uh, do some basic recording learn a little bit of uh, basics and then come back to web driver no worries i'll directly start with web driver i'll i'll teach you in such a way that in a very fundamental way yeah i'm just keep re- keeping a regular eye on the fix when it is going to be available and because not people are ma- very much bothered because web driver is a main thing and all the development happens on the web driver so today if you ask me uh, people who are using all the selenium got affected no it's a zero nobody got affected all the things are working fine and only people who developed and do you ask me real time people will develop the scripts only on id and depend on that absolutely no nobody will just have scripts only on id and 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 running the automation regularly with that is not the case people will have web driver scripts people will actually use java python or ruby on the web driver those things were 100% absolutely running fine without any problem okay so that's a quick uh, intro of ide we will come back but we already have uh, if you want to still get familiarize how the code works how the code snippet works and all uh, the document which i'm going to share it has all the uh, screenshots and everything of it and we have videos previously i have done it karthik has done it uh, in the previous session so you can definitely watch those videos to see uh, all the screenshots how to record etc uh, etc et okay you can just get familiar with them if you have time but uh, don't worry i'm going to deal in a very basic level in the um, web driver so that is one component so selenium is basically a suite of components it's not a single component so we have id which is useful in case of recording and playback and converting your script into the various formats you don't need to write any code it will just convert you say export into that format the format in that format it will be exported and that program you can copy and come to the web driver which we are going to discuss just paste it and run it it should it will work that was the only advantage rc no way available now so you can totally forget about this web driver very much available and we are going to spend all our discussions on this and which is the latest version which is 3.0 or you know precisely 3.6.1 and then uh, so what they have done in selenium 2 is Uh, when i say rc is totally not available what they have done in 2 is they merged rc and web driver into selenium 2 and if i have to just draw a little bit more picture again i'll update it back and send it uh, if you have to talk about in selenium 3 what they have done is they removed this rc totally so this rc is not at all uh, are they continuing the rc into selenium 3 no they are totally stopped so that is what the statement i was about to read in the uh, website there let's just go there seleniumhq.org download you can see the selenium server is needed in order to run remote selenium web driver and selenium 3.x is no longer capable of running your selenium rc directly okay Uh, but if you somebody still has rc and they wanted to run those scripts and all they have to create it through an emulation i don't think still people are using rc i know remote control uh, it was the case of i would say around 12 10 years back story and if somebody has still not upgraded after so many versions of selenium like 1 to 2 2 to 3 it's their problem in spite of uh, latest updates available but i don't think say, still anybody using rc uh, no the same features are available for us in the form of web driver what we are doing it today in 3.0 or 2.0 same programs if if we are just running it in a very simpler architecture but in the beginning they don't have this kind of technology they don't have this kind of Uh, languages so they had to do it in a very work around way you had to have a client you had to have a server and client connecting to the server to initiate and server responding back to the client for running a program there was a lot of back and forth between the client and server performance was very very delayed 
uh, lots of uh, you need to have two different systems to connect it so but that time that was a technology if somebody asked me what is uh, why iPhone 4 or 5 got invented before iPhone 8 when is which is or 10 which is super so I, I really don't I mean you can understand right so that is how it was that was the technology at that time and people would have developed some scripts so they have to uh, selenium has to maintain them for some time so they were maintaining till 2.0 and uh, 2.0 was there for till last year i'm telling you almost 10 years it was there so people should have upgraded so who have not upgraded probably will be impacted now a little bit of it even today they are saying you are not impacted you can do it something like an emulation way which uh, which is still i think they are helping the people who still have it so but in a way in 3.0 you can directly run the without rc of any of those even in 2 we, we were never connecting to rc we were able to run but it was somehow internally depending on the rc but that dependency is also totally gone uh, totally gone in the selenium 3 very much uh, grid is another component that is still available which is grid uh, 2.0 we call it as by the time we start grid uh, it will be another 15 15 sessions or so by the time if uh, if any other version comes i'll upgrade with that otherwise it will be totally grid 2.0 training will be totally on 3.0 and if if somebody has a scripts already developed in 2.0 they will also pretty much work in 3.0 so you won't have any problem so is everybody clear with the suit or the components uh, that we have within the selenium today it's all about uh, id is still there it will come back we have web driver which is a 3.0 version and we have a grid which is 3.0 version don't worry much on the rc and don't worry much on lots of differences puja i mean uh, all we cannot really so that's the beautiful right so when you start better you start with the latest version and uh, whatever you're going to write in in, in this or already existing in 2.0 will definitely be available I, i'll probably give those basic points there are certain things related to the browsers certain things related to the configurations how do we do it probably i'll list it out and give it uh, as we talk or when i actually talk about the feature it automatically comes in my uh, explanation so we can we can definitely do that okay this is a comparison i just drafted it uh, you can refer it back later i'm not going to go into each of these statements but uh, people asked i know it was a very uh, popular question among the uh, attendees so i had prepared it some time back so what is the difference between selenium and uh, other commercial tools like it's an open source tool this is commercial tool supports on these browsers supports on these browsers it supports on windows it supports only on windows here windows linux etc these are the different languages whereas a vb script supports only uh, sorry uft supports only vb script or javascript selenium uh, somebody asked another question what is the difference between um, uh, selenium and selenium web driver and any ot okay this is one good point that you can actually think of uh, selenium is extendable what does it mean by extendable it's freely available you can take selenium and you can develop on top of that the way you want the good example are any ot what we're trying to do with the workers INC again, which is associated with IT learn is that we are trying to develop a framework uh, which has gone live recently and the next few enhancements are coming to it. And there are a few real time uh, projects are already started using it is that we have completely leveraged the Selenium uh, 2.0 library underneath it. It's like this. Uh, and it's it's we are not the only one and there is another product that's already done it in the market some time back so what people can do they can take the selenium 2 dot library when i say library you can think of uh, a suite of functions it will have to perform on your web browser web page checkbox radio button push button uh, different controls of the web application uh, connecting to databases connecting to uh, excel files etc etc so you have all those required functions libraries in the 2.0 on different controls to work with it right and people have done taken so this is open source and it's available for anybody we can we can also go to github i'll show sometime uh, in the next session we can go to the github of selenium and we can also take the entire code 
so you will get the selenium code once you get the selenium code on top of it you can you can write or develop wrappers the way your people wanted to see it right the way your people wanted to use it uh, that is where we have done this any art so that what we wanted to do is we wanted to abstract all the code from the people who will use this framework it's typically uh, this is just again i told you this is not the only thing there is another one already available in the market called robot framework so robot framework what they have done is it's majorly a keyword driven framework that they have developed but again when when they use a keyword like um, open browser or when they key, use a keyword like click link internally it is going to use selenium 2.0 functions predefined functions and similarly what we are trying to do in any auto is also same thing you develop it's like a, a, a test management come an automation tool so you can prepare your test cases and everything in the inyot and you can start developing the automation in a very easy way without really knowing the selenium commands and everything you will pick up simple english language keywords and we will internally call the selenium library and your job will be done on the browser whatever you want so like that selenium can be extended by the companies to the need of how they wanted it so that's that's one thing that uh, and it even supports mobile devices there is something called an apm library if you use apm library uh, it can also be used for that mobile testing <clears throat> so the only uh, problem that people initially thought uh, not and, and not really switch to the selenium in the beginning was that it's an open source and if we get into some problem who will help us but today that is not the case for just the id is an exceptional case because uh, uh, they are also not giving much focus because they have lot of other problems to solve on the web driver to come up with new enhancements and etc but today there's a lot of uh, activities are going on, on the selenium side you are getting day by day lot of new features and if you get struck on the web driver side if there is anything that's not working the team of people who are developing it will immediately react and will come up with the solution uh, as quickly as possible like any other commercial tool but whereas in commercial tool if you get into any problem you will just call up their customer care or write an email immediately the technical people will start helping you and you know you come out of the problem otherwise their product is at risk so only that much luxury that you get in the commercial tools which you don't get it in the open source tools you have to just wait for a day or a two to get the actual fix from uh, the company okay so you can read out that uh, things and i was trying to explain each and everything of how do you install id how do you install firebug i'll share this document uh, there is one more important thing that you need uh, to start with uh, selenium is that is a firebug so just go to google firebug is again for firefox when we go to internet explorer we have a different mechanism just press f12 will come to know uh, developer tools and we can find it from there let me explain firebug and then i'll tell you for other versions what is there so for example if this is my project and uh, i have to uh, start developing an automation for this all i need to know is what is the what are these controls for example maybe i want to first go to a sign up and register myself then i want to go to a login and login myself or i want to click on this uh, so that you know there is another page that comes up and i can fill these details or maybe i just want to click on the login directly and i'll i'll enter these values and there is a checkbox and there is a facebook link okay i want to automate these cases okay but i need to know what my developer has done for these controls how he developed these controls what properties it has for these controls if i know those properties we are going to write the program uh, in the web driver according to the selenium expectation but knowing these properties how will i know these properties because code is not available with me in web is still okay you will have this uh, right click view page source that is more of an html um but more interested in uh, any actually any automation how it works is like this it's not just the selenium even if it is qtp so think of this is your tool this is your tool automation tool or test tool and this is your application we generally call it as aut application under test you can simply call it as aut and now you have different controls there is a link there 
and there is a text box there there is a drop down list here and there is a, a button here and there is a grid or a table a lot of people feel this is complex thing to handle but we'll see good examples on the grid and table how to do it uh, there is a checkbox uh, there is a radio button okay these are the different controls now in order to develop the script in my testing tool i need to know how these controls are developed actually what happens when the developer developed it he will provide certain properties to it he will provide certain unique properties uh, properties to it and some common properties for example the very first thing that any control uh, will have is a class property to which class it belongs to is it a button or a link or a drop down list or a table or a grid kind of thing so which category all these web objects have been categorized into various categories like a web browser first comes into picture then web page comes into picture and a page will have collection of frames f r a m e s frames will be there within a frame there will be a links will be there there will be some text boxes will be there there will be some radio button it's not that compulsorily frame will be there but some developers do use frames also in the pages we need to understand all that architecture first a little bit of it and more importantly what are the properties of these controls and for example it has a class name and it has something called name and it has something called uh, if some developer uh, and if the if if he really i mean knows the need of automation if he really understand the pain of automation uh, developer will try to provide a unique id for every single control okay if a control is provided with a unique id our job will be very easy we will simply because every single id control will have a unique id when you have a unique id absolutely there is no problem you will get it uh, for development of the script automation script all you will do is since every control has an id you will come back to your testing tool uh, yeah control object actually in the word okay so sayad has a question is control is same as object control object most commonly in selenium people use it as locator they use the word called locator so these are the different locators that you have okay all you will do is you'll come back to your selenium or uft or vsts or any other open uh, automation tool and you'll simply write the code in the language that uh whatever vb script or java or javascript or python whatever you write it in such a way that go to the control whose id equal to you will mention that id here let's say the id of this is 1 okay 1 2 3 just giving some number you will say go to the control 1 2 3 and then you will say do whatever the operation the operation depends on what control type if it is a text box you will enter the value if it is a list box you will pick up the value if it is a check box you will check it if it is a table you will uh, read something from it if it is a push button you will click on it please understand this it's very important when we start developing the framework this things in you should be in your mind all these concepts because uh, it's very fundamentally any automation tool does it in the same way so the every control will have some properties and but believe me most of the times you may not directly find the id okay you may not find the direct unique id instead of unique id there will be other properties like class name name uh, links will have uh, if there is a link it will have something called text text property uh, text is actually whatever the link there for example if you see here uh, this sign up is like a text of this link okay so there are different different properties that controls will have and we as a automation developer we need to know what properties my developer has provided so that i can develop my automation script based on the properties so the question comes is how will i know these properties okay i cannot just know by uh, in any other format so there should there are some tools available like if you go to firefox browser there is something called uh, just go to google and say firebug okay firebug and this is for 
it's it's even available for Chrome, but majorly it was for a uh, Firefox available. So you can just go here and there is again like the way we I did install IDE. Uh, you can go and install this Firebug and you'll simply click on Add to Firefox. Okay. Once you do Add to Firefox again, uh, it will come up with the same option of do you want to add this extension click on add and after that you say restart then what will happen can you see this icon here can all of you see this firebug 2.0.19 icon so that icon will come onto your browser initially when you don't have that firebug you won't have uh, that icon coming up there so only you have to go and install then the uh, firebug icon will come there okay now what we're going to do is I'll just go back to this and now I wanted to see what is there here okay so click on the firebug now you can see when I click on the firebug something has come in the bottom uh, here and there is a mouse kind of an eye there's a mouse pointer which is available here and then I will just a little bit of minimize it I'll close all these things in a way we are preparing ourselves with all the fundamentals today so that the next class that is tomorrow we'll start developing the script directly so um, okay I wanted to see the properties of okay I'm actually in a different page let me just go back go back so this is the home page and I wanted to see the I can I can just do it on any control but I'm just wondering what is happening here for a minute yeah now it's coming okay so I want to do uh, this just you know click on this mouse icon that was coming up and just go click anywhere for example you want to see this text text box thing uh, you can see what is coming up here in the HTML CSS there's nothing that's coming up let me just go and try doing this on image <clears throat> okay let me just enable this and see what happens use firebox toolbar button to enable or disable all panels at once I can see some of them but it's not giving the required info of what we are looking for could be the same problem again so that's okay but all I need is uh, definitely you need firebug okay, okay Jyotika is saying it's not working with the latest version see what we do most of the time is uh, in, in, in other versions if you are in it's very easy for example if you go to IE and if you want to do the same thing on the control just right click on it <coughs> you can see inspect element option just click on the inspect element option and uh, you'll see what are the different properties it has that I was talking about so it has something called class so when the firebug works properly also same thing will happen when you click on that arrow button and click on any of the control it will try to tell you it is a link and its class property is this its href property is this and the text link text that it has is uh, this one hire freelancer or apply freelancer so this information we are going to get it on uh, either with the firebug okay that's on the Firefox browser if it is an Internet Explorer you're going to do it with just by right clicking on the element whatever the element that you wanted to see uh, just right click on this link login and say inspect element 
and directly it will show the properties all I need to know is what properties it has it just has a property called it's a link href and here you have the value called login when we know these things then what we're going to do is we're going to we know so we'll be knowing all these properties what is that and from this you have to identify what can be the unique one okay what can be the unique one from this and then you will have to write the program here sometimes one property will help sometimes more than one property will help so we have to take a combination of properties that will make it unique and you write the program when you write the program what will happen when you run this it will go search on your application which control is matching to these properties of id123 or link text of login uh, there is one more thing apart from name so typically in selenium it will identify with eight different ways one is name class name id text link text and there are two more important things that are uh, the firebug was showing was like there's something called uh, xpath this is something called xpath and there is so a uh, lot of people uh, i will i will not be using this tool initially to write an xpath i'll be explaining you uh, how do you generate xpath how do you should write an xpath because in the interview people might ask you questions uh, what is absolute xpath relative xpath etc but over a period of time once you understand the concept uh, once you understand the logic or when you actually get into the job you cannot always go on manually writing it so there are tools available like uh, again in the fire firebug uh, there is another tool called firepath you need to add it to your firefox and when you inspect the element you can see directly the uh, xpath is coming here you need to just copy this and write in the program your job is done and same case with css okay so sometimes we'll be writing with the css values as well so Totally, there are eight different uh, ways in which you can identify a control in WebDriver and perform the operation. We'll see all eight different with an example on different different locators. Okay, so this is how you're going to develop the program, and when you like that, you will write for every different control how to take the property, what operation you want to do, and in between you will write the if-else conditions to match with your uh, expected values and actual value checking or not you for that you will have to use java program so typically in selenium the program that you're going to write is some of them are web driver commands some of them are java commands and when you start using test ng there will be some test ng annotations when you use j unit there will be some j unit annotations when you work with some excel database again there will be java code so like that it's a combination of all these things and when you run this program it will try to identify on the application how the so there can be a situation where two controls almost will have same properties like both of them are uh, web edits both of them have same height both of them have same width so uh, and so that's where the unique id if it is there it would have helped us and sometimes you'll end up uh, not able to locate that control with any unique properties so you need to work with the development team and see if you can get the properties changed by them in a unique way that will help you the advantage of uh, going with id than any other thing is that uh, this is a current problem and challenge that i have in my team is it's it's basically a localization team we we test our products on various languages not just english language suppose if you have this enus website is going to come uh, this qa on air website it's going to come in enus japan french etc etc uh, you know you will not have the same thing like login and sign up here in french it will be different japanese it will be different etc etc if you would have written the program with a text like login it will immediately fail when when you switch the language because it cannot understand you are searching you are identifying your program using the text as login and now your browser is on a different language so it cannot understand it will fail but if you could have developed your program with id then id will not change whatever the language that you switch id will be still same and your program 100 percent works on all the languages so right now we have this challenge of not every control has an id we are pushing back the development team hard to uh, implement those ids so that our our life will be easy and today we have to depend on a couple of texts and they will fail obviously when we switch the language okay so good question that neeta is asking uh, 
that next session is not anywhere just tomorrow uh, I uh, don't waste your time on IDE at this point of the time I would not recommend do not install anything on IDE just install the Java just the Java and how to install Java you can refer my previous session and in fact I wanted to kind of start installing the Eclipse IDE today and write a bit of program uh, but that's okay there were a lot of new people today as well and there were a lot of uh, fundamental questions on to start with these sessions if I don't answer them it will be a kind of confusion for them so tomorrow the first thing we're going to do is install this Eclipse ID okay once you install the how to from how to install from where to install uh, I will be taking care of it so there is nothing that uh, that's what so don't worry on all that I, I'm going to run it I'm going to explain you how to install all you need is install Java for that you refer my previous session I told how to install Java how to uh, configure the Java class path and home path just just do that that's it and then tomorrow I will explain you how we can install this uh, Eclipse IDE I'll just quickly show uh, uh, <clears throat> we just need another two minutes how to install this IDE uh, from where you install this IDE I will explain and then uh, what I did like we'll create some project like this and then there will be a lot of reference libraries here uh, until you don't need to write any selenium web driver code you don't need the selenium library but the moment you when you wanted to write a code like this web driver driver dot get open to this URL and all then you would need a selenium library so then I will explain from where you can get the selenium library how you configure it into uh, this project so we just go here to the project properties tomorrow don't worry on all these things I'm going to repeat it uh, we'll go here and to the libraries we'll add that library of selenium and for that you need to know from where to download and then we'll add it once you add it we can actually start writing a code like this okay uh, basically uh, there is a gecko driver that we need to also download and put it so this is what it is so all things like just to run this small program I'll tell you just for this small program Eclipse anyway you have to install you do that but you need to download this gecko driver and put it here you need to install selenium because you are using the web driver components so those are the only things that we kept on keep on doing it on a incremental basis and by the time you learn everything your project will have reference libraries from so many things like JUnit, testng web driver gecko driver apache pui database related so so many things will be there so we'll do it in a step by step so deepika has a question yes if i don't explain then you will not understand what is gecko driver and all i will explain but in real life you don't write script independently you are checking in or out to store script yeah yeah we'll do that so once we develop all these things on the IDE and store it locally uh, again refer to my orientation session git and github is also part of this so I will be talking through git and github how do we check in from a central location check out and all that I think what I get now is a lot of people have not watched orientation I would strongly recommend uh, please go and watch my orientation session and day one session and today's day two session before tomorrow's session that will clear out a lot of things it's already available on the YouTube also as a free uh, if you would have received an email from us anytime in the past I, I hope that's how you joined today that email will have a link okay all right so that's all for today uh, I hope you all got what is an introduction to detailed introduction to selenium who developed what components what suites uh, and then tomorrow we're going to start directly writing these uh, programs of course I will explain you step by step how to come here and then we'll start moving in a very fundamental way all right please watch all the three videos before tomorrow no it will be little confusing in the beginning uh, let me tell you not only you even with a good experience and other commercial tools I had to have a little bit confusion but everything will go off by by over a period of time maybe in like another a week or so when we start doing the things everything will be done timing will be same no change in the time no other schedule is going to come we will have continuous session starting from today so tomorrow we'll have the session okay 
see you all tomorrow thank you for watching bye